Perhaps I should end my story right here. I think I made a mistake beginning to write at all. At least, I felt ashamed all the time I'd been writing, so it's no longer literature, but penal correction. After all, to tell a long story about how I missed life through uh, decaying morally in a corner, not having sufficient means, losing the habit of living, and all the time carefully cultivating my anger underground. Oh, really, that's not interesting. A novel needs a hero. Here I am, thinking of doing such a thing, and I'm on in a jitter. Well, of course. Everything is in a man's own hands. And if he lets it all slip through his fingers, that's sheer cowardice. What do people fear most? What they're most afraid of is taking a new step or uttering a new word. However, I'm talking too much. That's why I do nothing. And because I do nothing, I talk too much. Lying about all day in this filthy hole and thinking. Thinking of all sorts of stupid things. Raskolnikov, a student. I was here a month ago. I've brought you something I want to pawn. Let me have four rubles for it. Why bother me with such junk? <laughs> a ruble and a half. A ruble and a half? You must be joking. Take it or leave it. All right. Let's have it. We've just met a young man called Raskolnikov. He's thinking about committing a murder. He's embarked on a run-through. His own word for it is a rehearsal. It's also the beginning of crime and punishment. I think the greatest thriller in the world, the king of all detective stories. It's also the first great modern novel. Its radical quality, its pervasive quality, is uncertainty bottomless uncertainty. Its mood is introspection. The hero asks himself, what if I'm alone? What if there's no God? What if social rules don't bind on me? What if God, society, morals don't really force me to behave their way? What if I'm alone? It's asking these questions that makes Raskolnikov the spiritual forefather of us all. <laughs> 